Yak of Love Yak 141. The Yak 141 Western reporting name freestyle was a vertical takeoff and landing VTOL multi role fighter. Its original designation was the Yak 41, however, this designation was classified by the Soviet military. The Yak 141 was actually a fictitious name, applied to the demonstrator aircraft which set a number of world records. By this name this shipborne fighter was known in the West, it was also applied for promotional purposes by the Yakovlev Design Bureau. Development of this aircraft began in 1975. It had to become the first supersonic aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capability. In addition it should have had weapons and radar, equal to those of the frontline fighters. It is worth mentioning, that Yakovlev Design Bureau already had a great experience in creating aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capability, such as the Yak-36 and Yak-38. The last mentioned has been successfully tested during the Soviet war in Afghanistan. However Soviet government and military officials were not entirely satisfied with its performance, especially due to its short operational range and poor electronic systems. Also the Yak-38 was inferior to the British Harrier. So in 1975 Yakovlev Design Bureau was ordered to develop a more powerful and unprecedented plane with supersonic speed, vertical takeoff, and landing capability, longer range and a powerful armament, that could take off from aircraft carriers. Designers from the Yakovlev Bureau found out, that the double engine scheme of the Yak-38 and Harrier was not suitable for the new plane. Instead they created a layout with a single engine, that could turn 95 degrees down with two additional vertical thrust engines, located in the middle of the fuselage, just behind the center of gravity. These would turn on only during vertical takeoff, vertical landing, and hovering. Engineers had to stretch body of the aircraft for aerodynamic stability. This is why the Yak-141 is larger than its predecessor, the Yak-38. Initially a duck configuration with a single square shaped engine was discussed, however soon this idea was declined because of low maneuverability and technical problems, even though such scheme was low observable. After nearly 20 years a plane with such kind of layout and propulsion, the X-32, lost tender in the USA during the Joint Strike Fighter program to the F-35. The first prototypes of the Yak-141 were completed in 1987. Altogether four planes were built, two for static tests and two for flight tests. Aircraft made its first flight and test flights began the same year. Flight tests were successfully conducted in 1990, when aircraft made past a full test program, including vertical takeoff and landing, short takeoff, flying at supersonic speed then slowing down to hovering and so on. In 1991 during a single flight the new aircraft set 12 world records in its class. One of the records was achieving a 12 km vertical takeoff. After this flight the new plane received the Yak-141 designation. In 1991 two prototype aircraft performed their first vertical landing on Baku later renamed Admiral Gorshkov Kiev class light aircraft carrier. The Yak-141 was intended both for naval aviation and air force. Primary user was the Soviet Navy. A futuristic and innovative idea was bound with this airplane. Idea was to create a mobile takeoff and landing platform, which had small dimensions and could withstand aircraft's weight and hot jets from the engines. This platform would be mounted on the DT-30 Vaishya's articulated all-terrain track carrier which was also under development at that time. The Vaishya's could transport the platform to such territories, that could not be reached by usual off-road vehicles and were no opportunities to build an airfield. The Yak-141 could land on this mobile platform, fill the fuel from another DT-30 tanker and continue its mission. Payload capacity of the DT-30 is 30T, so such kind of mission was no problem for it. Actual tests of the Yak-141, based on the DT-30 were made, 
however development of the Vaishyas was protracted and soon the Yak-141 program appeared to be on the brink of failure. So this unprecedented idea, which could give advantage to the Soviet Union was not implemented. The Yak-141 was capable of engaging air, ground, and sea targets. It was armed with a single 30mm cannon. Missile armament included the R-73 Western reporting name A-11 Archer, or R-27A-10 Alamo air-to-air -air missiles and KH-31 S-17 Krypton air-to-ship missiles. It was planned that the Yak-141 will be capable of carrying the new R-77A-12 Adder air-to-air -air missiles and KH-35 S-20 Kayak anti-ship cruise missiles, that were being developed during the same time frame as the aircraft. This multi-role fighter also had provision to carry unguided air-to-ground munitions and bombs. Wings of this warplane are folding, as it is usual for a carrier-based plane. The Yak-141 multi-role fighter did not enter production. The funding for this program ceased in 1991 after a landing accident on the aircraft carrier, when one prototype landed during excessive sidewind and was badly damaged. After collapse of the Soviet Union military funding was limited. In 1992 the Yak-141 program was cancelled as it happened with many other promising weapon systems. Also by 1995 Russia decommissioned all Kiev-class aircraft carriers, this plane was intended for. In 1992 the Yak-141 was presented at Farnborough International Air Show and L.E. Bauerget in 1993. Visitors and appraisers gave highest marks to this unique aircraft. Some countries showed interest in acquiring this plane, however no action.